tries to tackle that in a, what I hope is quite a unique way. Um, so ReSpace is about empty buildings and wasted resources, as I just said, uh, except it's not really. It's about survival. That's what it really is about. It's about how are we going to make it over the next 15, 20, 25, 30, 40 years in the face of extreme challenges. How are we going to make it? So, uh, this talk is called The War of Art, and it's based on a book I read when I was about six years old. It was a book by a guy called Sun Tzu, who is a, a, a Chinese philosopher from around two and a half thousand years ago. And he was a philosopher, he was a strategist, he was a general, and he wrote this book that even to this day I don't believe has been improved upon in terms of how you're going to make it, how you're going to survive. So this talk is called The War of Art, and uh, you might think, who is this guy, and why does he get to talk about art? Like, who is he? What does he do? Um, so I'm going to tell you just for a minute or two before I start who I am. So, yeah, my name's G. I uh, founded Respace in 2015. But before that, how I came on this journey was I came across a place called the 491 Gallery about 10 years ago. Now, I don't know if anybody knows it, but it was the longest-running community squad, art community, uh, in the country at the time. It was on the news, it was well-known, and I was lucky enough to be part of it. And I was lucky enough then to meet a group of artists, much like yourselves, creatives, people with vision, people with ideas, who were living in this new, surprising way that I hadn't seen before. They were squatting, they were living essentially for free of society. And I learned from that. And so I started my own crew, and that crew was called Suspensive. And what we did was we took over empty buildings, sometimes just for a week, and we would transform them. We would turn old theatres back into the days of glory from the Victorian age, or we would 
take huge warehouses and turn them into seedy dens of ill repute. And then we would take everything down and give it away, and then we would leave. And so after doing that for a few years and getting really bored of leaving, I started Respace. And our first project, legitimately done, was a project called the Hive Dalston, which I don't know if any of you have heard of, but it was a giant office dog. Yes. Uh, <laughs> thank you. No, it was a good place. I really enjoyed it. Um, so we had an initial contract uh, with the developer. We spoke to them. We said, look, we're going to use this building. We're going to use it for free. We're going to protect it. We're going to look after it. We're going to make it look great. And then we're going to run loads of community stuff in it. And you're going to have a great time. And it worked out that way. And the Hive was a great model for how we could take this empty space. We could take these wasted resources. We could give them directly to the people who need them the most. So we ran workshops, we ran events, we ran conferences, we ran exhibitions, and we ran, I mean, everything that you could possibly think of in that building. And we ran it for a total cost for three years of £250, just based off the fact, thank you very much, just based off the fact that, you know, we've got, we've got what it takes as a population, as people, we've got what it takes. We don't need all of this shit, you know, we can do it, we can do it differently, we can do it better. So then after having done that, we went on a long trail of proving ourselves. And so 10 projects later, and eight years later, I'm standing in front of you here to tell you about all the art and all the culture and all the different organizations that we've seen and what I've learned from that. So this talk is called The War of Art, Weapons of Mass Destruction. So I'm going to start with a quote from Sun Tzu, and that quote is, Know thyself, know thy enemy. A thousand battles, a thousand victories. So what does he mean by this? Well, what he means is that Gil Scott Heron was wrong. Gil Scott Heron said, The revolution will not be televised. Well, not only was it televised, television was the revolution. The screens, the phones, the internet, the laptops that bring art and culture into our face every single day. That was a revolution we didn't even see happening until after it happened. And the role of art as commentary and as a way of passing knowledge has been vital to us through the centuries. It describes the environments that we live in. Live in. It describes the challenges we face and the tools that we have to fight them. It tells us who, it describes to us our opponents. And it helps us gain support for our causes. And it always has. I'll give you a couple of examples. Picasso. Now his paintings of the German bombings of Guernica described to the entire world what was happening, what destruction was being wreaked. And more recently, Susan Cryle, who drew pictures of uh, torture victims in Abu Ghraib, people tortured by the American prison, uh, by the American uh, soldiers. Her pictures described, in a way, the horrors that those people faced that nobody else could see or hear or understand. And those two examples are supported because. Art is protest. Art is revolution. Art and culture and music and dance and all the things that we do, all the ways that we communicate. So I'd like to give you an example of the Arab Spring. I'd like to take that as an example of art as protest because I'm quoting. Prior to the revolution, street art was rare. In the cities of Cairo and the great cities of the Middle East, but now the streets flourish with testimonies of resistance, of bravery, of suffering, of triumph. So to document the people's dissent and to fight the corrupt political system, the local artists turned the city walls into canvases. That's beautiful. But propaganda, propaganda disrupts this flow of information. 
Now, what is propaganda? Propaganda is, according to the definition by Merriam-Webster, which I forgot to write down, but it's vaguely like it's information that is being provided with the specific purpose of furthering a cause or an aim or a political uh, process. And to that you can add commercial, because let's face it, commercial and political are the same thing nowadays. Now what does propaganda do? Well I'd like to give you another example, Hanoi Hanna. Has anyone ever heard of Hanoi Hanna? Maybe, maybe not? Well, I'm about to tell you. I won't be, I'll be as quick as I can. So Hanoi Hanna was uh, broadcast to the American GIs in the Vietnam War. And it was something that was broadcast by the Vietnamese. And the aim of Hanoi Hanna was to spread misinformation and dissent and to question the morality, to, to provide moral judgments on the actions of the American soldiers there. And this is the example of what Hanoi Hanna might have said. She said, how are you, G.I. Joe? It seems to me that you are poorly informed about the goings of the war with no correct explanation as to why you're even here. Nothing is more confused than to be ordered to war, to die, or to be maimed without the faintest idea of what's going on. Now imagine that, if you're a GI lost alone in the jungle, if you're with your friends and you're just wondering, what the fuck, what the fuck, right, it gets in your head. Now there's no judgments here, right, but it was enough, it was enough for Hanoi Hanna to become immortalized in a song by a guy called Roger McGinn. And I would listen to it, it's a great song. And what is it, what is it it's able to teach us is, and what art is able to teach us is, who are our opponents? And how do we avoid propaganda? That's the extremely important one. How do we avoid propaganda? And in this way, I'd like to quickly come back to Sun Tzu, who said, be extremely subtle. To the point of formlessness, he said, be mysterious to the point of soundlessness. And thus the idea of the Respace Alliance was born. Something that is subtle, something that is formless, something that is mysterious, something that exists merely to facilitate the use of empty buildings and wasted resources. And that's not unusual, there are hundreds of organisations that do the same sort of thing, but the art is in what you do. And that's what we have been embarking upon for the last seven years, since the Hive and all the various projects. We've been collecting data, we've been collecting statistics, we've been trying to prove our point. And our point is very simple. Our point is, people need places. Places where messages and ideas, positive messages, great ideas have the space and have the time to actually impact upon the widest number of people. We need these places, we need these spaces, spaces like this, spaces like the house, spaces that exist everywhere and they're under attack and we know it. We know they're under attack. I don't need to give you a whole list of statistics. But these places are important. Where you are today is important because it is beyond the system. It is somewhere that exists outside the system. Alright, so... Now that's important. This is really important. Beyond the system is important. And the re What? All right, fine. We'll take that. Well, it's beyond. It's beyond the present-day system of neoliberalism and capitalism. No, I know. I appreciate that. That's why you need to respace it. Next time, come to me. We'll talk. I'll explain it. It'll be great. But anyway, no, you make a very good point, and that is that is a very good point, and it is something that is addressed. I mean, I'm not going to cover it in this chat because it's about art, but that is a very interesting point. But anyway, Sun Tzu. Back to Sun Tzu, 2,500 years ago, Sun Tzu said, the invincibility, invincibility lies in defense, and the possibility of victory 
lies in attack. And what did I learn from this and what does it mean? It means this, is you can't and you don't have to sit and wait and hope that this will not come, that the enemy will not attack, that our opponents will not come for us. What you have to do, what you must do, is you must make yourself strong. You must make yourself resilient. You have to be ready to receive the enemy when they come. The opportunity to secure ourselves lies in our hands. It's up to us what we do. And then the opportunity to defeat those who are coming for us, that's something that they will provide. They will show us. But unless we are strong and we focus on our defenses and ourselves, then we are vulnerable. And what does that even mean? That means this. That means, when you talk about securing, you're talking about food. Making sure there's enough, always. Making sure that we have the tools that we need. Making sure that we're healthy. Making sure that we have spaces for training each other. Making sure that we have the intelligence, the knowledge, and the people. That's what it means. And that's what Respace has been trying to work on for the last seven years. We've been working on an infrastructure that is going to try and provide these things. It's going to open up empty buildings and bring together. And we want to see all of you become part of it. It brings together people with their ideas in these empty spaces with all of these wasted resources so that we can build resilience, so that we can have community kitchens, so that we can have workshops and spaces and event spaces where we don't have to worry so that we can... Exactly. I want to give you a statistic. It's the only one that I have in the whole talk, and I think I'm only a couple of pages away from the end of it. So I hope you bear with me a second. But this is very important. Because... According, according to the best data, communities that have communal infrastructure, people's kitchens, community workshops, spaces, places where they own them, they work them, they hang out, they communicate with each other. Those communities, in times of disaster, have a 70% better survival rate than communities that rely on governmental or authoritarian infrastructure. That's a stark fucking number. And in the face of all of the crises that we're about to face, Knowing that just we're, we're 20 years, 15 years away from not small boats coming across, big boats coming across with hundreds of thousands of people on each one. People who are fleeing absolutely rightly in terror from the impact of the climate changes that they are facing. Add to that all the other crises that we're facing. Let us not be foolish about this. Is coming, and we best be ready. So, what does Sun Tzu say about this? Sun Tzu says the victorious warriors win first, then they go to war. Defeated warriors go to war and hope they win. So what he means by this, I think, is that it's of extreme importance for us to know what is the strategy that is being used against us. What is the enemy, the enemy? What is their strategy? It's the same as it has always been. It's the strategy that served the Romans. It's the strategy that very well served the British. I mean, it's, it's, we're all standing around the way we are. Distract, divide, and conquer. And it has always been thus, and it always will be. Divide and conquer. And we can see it every day in the atomization of society. We can see it in the left versus right, in the woke versus unwoke, in the snowflakes versus the tough guy. We can see it in the transgender issues. We can see it. We can see it everywhere. We can see the tools of it. Distrust, 
fear, isolation, mental health issues that affect every single one of us. One in four Londoners. How many people is that in this room today? It's here. It's now. And the question is how? How? How are they doing this? Semiotics. Semiotics. Semiotics is the study, uh, let me give you the precise definition, it's the investigation into how meaning is communicated. It is the study of signs and symbols and how they create trends, meanings and waves of understanding in people. It is what they have used to advertise to us. It is what the media use to tell us. It is propaganda. So how do we defeat it? There's only one way. Togetherness. So thank you for all coming here together today. It's amazing. Togetherness. Alliances. Sharing. Trust. Trust. Trust defeats them. When we trust each other, we don't need them. When we trust each other, we're stronger. We have to use their weapons for us. We have to use our art and our culture and our words and our trust and our honesty. We have to use that for us. So I'm going to finish now. I'm going to finish on um, one last quote from Sun Tzu. <coughs> Sun Tzu says, The supreme art of war, the supreme art of war, is to defeat your opponent without fighting, without even raising a weapon. That is the supreme art of war, and that is what we must do. Come on. Now, art and culture, it's important to play a role in this, because not only is it about commentating and explaining, thank you, but it's also, art is important because it's there to encourage change, it's there for freedom. That's why punk is so important. Because punk has always represented freedom. Punk has always represented the, the people inside the big system that's there to oppress us. But it's not just to encourage that. It's to encourage change and it's to encourage action. Arts and culture's responsibility is to help us to know ourselves. And it's to help us to know who our enemies are. It is to be subtle. It is to be mysterious. It is to build ourselves and our defences. And to expose the enemy's strategies, our opponent's strategies. It's there to form trust and build togetherness. It's there to help us understand that communication and unity together become community. And so, I'm going to uh, leave you now. Turbo! 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 So I'm going to leave you now. Turbo! With a quote from Ernst Fischer. And that is, In a decaying society, if it is truthful, art must also reflect decay. And, unless it wants to break faith with its social function, art must show how the world is changeable and help to change it. up to Barry Manlow covers and uh, so hopefully you're all ready for me now. So, uh, no, I'd love to welcome to the stage a band that needs no introduction because you all fucking know their name because you were shouting at them. You're like, shut up, turbo. So guess what? 
I'm gonna shut up. Togo! Yeah. Yeah.